Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Tuesday, December 5, 2023. Dante confides in Sam, Curtis seeks assistance from Sonny in his inquiry, and Anna seeks comfort from Felicia. Laura assists Esme in packing her and Ace's belongings for their new house. Esme expresses her gratitude to Laura for everything she's done for them, and they embrace. Esme acknowledges that now that the transfer is underway, she is scared she may blow it all. Laura adds she is always welcome to return if it turns out to be a mistake. Esme expresses gratitude. Cyrus is sweeping the floor at the Port Charles Grill when Ava enters. He informs her that they are no longer open. She claims she will not take up much of his time. She informs him that Austin is no longer alive and inquires as to why he murdered him. Cyrus, taken aback, asks how and when, and she discloses that he was shot in the chest at close range. He considers her a heartless woman, but she swears that he killed him. Alpha reveals him that she is aware he had Mason kidnap her in order for Austin to testify about his condition and aid in his release. She accuses him of murdering Austin in order to compensate him. Cyrus says he did not murder him. In fact, he put him through medical school because Austin was valuable to him. He also claims to have an alibi because he works past closing time every night. He inquires as to whether she has an alibi. Eva walks away. Later, Laura comes by to visit Cyrus, and he inquires as to what brings her by. She was curious about how his job was doing. He wonders why she cares, since she's told him to keep away from her. She says she'll depart if he wants, but she realizes their family and should attempt to find a happy medium. He sobs, saying that's all he's ever wanted. Cyrus laments how poorly his parents treated him as a child, and his mother refuses to accept money from him for her care. He cries that she, Martin, and his mother can continue to treat him as if he were dirt, but God knows what is in his heart, and that is more than enough for him. Laura wants to believe she was mistaken about him and that he has changed. He interprets that as a future apology, and she hopes to provide one. They are both laughing. Cyrus says she should know if she doesn't see him in the next week, that he hasn't reverted to his former ways, but that he is going to visit his mother, even if she doesn't want to see him. Laura wishes him a pleasant visit. Christina and Blaze kiss at Christina's house, and Blaze apologizes for ambushing her or making her uncomfortable. Christina claims she is not at all bothered. Christina was completely unaware that she was gay. Blaze claims that because of her circumstances, she is unable to be open about her identity, and she envies those who can. Christina thinks it is up to her when and how she expresses her sexuality. Everyone is on their own road. Blaze says she's seen so many relationships fail in this industry that it was easier for her to focus on her job. Christina inquires whether she truly believes her admirers would have a problem with her sexuality. Blaze believes her followers will accept her, but her strict Catholic family will not. Blaze discusses her grandma and relatives, as well as a recent vacation to Puerto Rico with them. She reveals that she has an uncle about whom no one speaks, and that she hasn't seen him since she was a child. She said she tried to find him online, but his name is fairly popular. She is afraid that if he is gay and comes out, he will lose his family. Christina says it's a hard decision to come out to your family, but it's a necessary one. She's not bold enough to do it. Christina says she's not suggesting it's a must to come out, but when she told her mother about her sexuality, she discovered she was associated with an older married woman. Her father, on the other hand, is old school, and she was terrified he would reject her. Instead, he accepted her right away, and his love enabled her to discover who she was— Blaze is pleased for her, but she is not yet there. Christina says she will decide when and if she wants to come out to her family. She is available for her and whatever she requires. Blaze compliments her on her beauty, and they kiss once more. Blaze finally leaves, but they want to keep in touch. Anna pays Felicia a visit and tells her she could use a friend. Felicia claims she has arrived at the correct location. 
Anna sobs, still reeling after Charlotte's shooting. Felicia describes it as a tragedy, but Charlotte is alive. Felicia recognizes Anna and inquires as to why she shot first before asking inquiries. Anna explains that she assumed her stalker was waiting for her and had no idea it was Charlotte because Valentine had kept her in the dark. Valentine didn't trust her enough to tell her anything that happened with Charlotte. Felicia apologizes but says it wasn't her fault and she says it's over for them. Felicia inquires about the individual she believes is targeting her at the WSB. Anna informs her that an op went wrong years ago, and this agent Forsyth was to fault, but the WSB buried it. She claims that she kept a copy of the report in a trunk with other files for safekeeping. She believed there could be something in the trunk that could give her a clue after her house burned down, and that's when she discovered the report. Anna reveals that she told Robert about her concerns about Forsyth, and he agreed with her. She returned home that night and discovered someone in her house. She came in armed, and that's when she shot Charlotte, whom she mistook for a pistol since she couldn't see her well. She goes on to say that shortly after the incident, the evidence went missing, and Forsyth was discovered dead in Port Charles. She believes he died as a result of something in the report. At Dante's, he gives Sam a piece of evidence, a key discovered with Jamison Forsyth, which he claims could be the key to determining who is after Anna. He says that it goes to a train station locker and informs her about Anna's lost evidence on Forsyth. Fortunately, he was able to persuade the me not to include the key in his report. They go to bed, and Dante tells her that the proof Anna had on Forsyth vanished when Charlotte was shot. Later, Forsyth's body was discovered, dead and holding the key. He hasn't examined the train station locker for the proof Anna had, and he hasn't told her yet. Why not, she wonders. Dante feels it's a trap, and that whoever killed Forsyth is seeking Anna. She inquires as to why he does not hand over the key to the PCP. He claims that the WSB may be watching the case, and that if the report is in that locker and they find it, they will destroy it, putting Anna in greater danger. Sam wonders why this is even a problem if it happened in the 1980s. Dante speculates that someone else may have been listed in that report, which is why Anna could still be in danger. Renan is enraged in his metro courtroom since Sonny did not accept their offer. Hume inquires as to how long he will be in town. Brennan stays long enough to ensure that the supplies to Canada are in place, and he cleans up the mess Forsyth left behind. Hume inquires as to how he intends to explain the WSB's chairman's extended absence. Brennan claims that being the director had its benefits, including the ability to work remotely, and that after getting rid of Frisco, everything else fell into place. Hume wonders if Sonny or Anna is their top priority. Brennan informs him about both. Hume inquires as to why they do not murder Sonny. Brennan claims that would create a hole in the mob world, with people competing to fill it, attracting unwanted attention. He believes they can force Sonny's hand. Hume wonders why there is such a fascination with Anna. Brennan tells him about the encounter with Forsyth, and Anna keeps a copy of the mission report for her records. Forsyth was intended to retrieve it as well as eliminate Anna, but he failed at both. According to Brennan, Forsyth's last message was that he had the report, so it's still out there and a ticking time bomb. Curtis pays a visit to Sonny's office and asks for his assistance. Curtis needs the names of anyone who might be interested in taking on him. Curtis explains that he wants to know who put him in this chair and who is at the top of Sonny's suspect list. Sonny informs Curtis that Cyrus falsely accused him of shooting him during the summer. Sonny mentions that the firearm used to shoot at him was obtained from a WSB locker in Berlin. Curtis inquires whether he believes Anna was the intended victim. Sonny says, not necessarily. Sonny tells Curtis about Pikeman, who has WSB connections, and how they tried to work with him, but it didn't work out. Curtis suspects Pikeman is after Sonny. Sonny isn't sure if Pikeman attempted to kill him, but he doesn't see why they go for Anna. Curtis claims he'll have to start from scratch. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.